Hi everyone, it's been quite some time since I've done any kind of a teaching video, although this is going to be more than just teaching, it's actually going to be a, um, uh, it's going to involve some software that I wrote myself. It's just, what I want to do is I want to show you a way to very, very easily create a VPN server for you to use. So even if you don't know anything about uh, technology, you don't know anything about development, you don't know anything about servers or anything else. I want to make this as easy as making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich because it's something that people are concerned about right now. People want to make VPNs uh, to protect their privacy and for the sake of security. So in this video, I'm going to describe what is a VPN, why do you want a VPN, um, and if you already know what a VPN is and you know why you want to use a VPN, then go ahead and you can skip this video uh, because this video might actually be kind of dry anyway. I'm just going to say that up front. So anyway, uh, VPN, so what is a VPN? VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. You can look up more videos from Eli the Computer Guy for more detailed descriptions of how a VPN works because he knows a whole lot more than I do. He's a lot smarter than I am. But the short version is that a VPN adds security by using a trusted proxy to encrypt data if you don't trust that your end of the connection is secure. Like say for example you're in a star you're connected to a Starbucks Wi-Fi. You're not completely sure you trust Starbucks. You're not completely sure that you trust everybody else in there. So it's going to add some extra security. So why do you want a VPN? So uh, two two main reasons. First reason is privacy. This is an issue now because uh, the uh, con Congress has recently uh, repealed a law that prevented your ISPs from selling your browser history to third party uh, th third parties that would use it for targeted advertising. So that means that IS your ISP, if you use I like I have Cox, if you use something else, uh, your ISP is now able to. Uh, to do that. They're able to sell your data. Now I actually personally think that repealing the law is good because the government, the federal government has a really really bad tra track record of regulating technology, especially internet related technology. But although I think repealing that was good, it doesn't mean I want my ISP to uh, sell my browser history. So what the ISP is going to do, I mean sorry, what a VPN is going to do is it's going to hide your browser history uh, from your ISP. So your ISP is not going to know where you are. So um, they're only going to see encrypted data instead. So that's one thing that, uh, that a VPN is going to do. Basically, when you use a VPN, your ISP is not going to be giving you the information from a website. They're going to be giving you a uh, locked box and they don't have the key, so they don't know what's inside. That's just kind of a metaphor, I guess. Okay, so the second reason that you would want uh, to use a VPN is because of security. Now, imagine George Washington sen sending a message to the Continental Congress saying, I will cross the Delaware River. Now imagine a British spy, and we know that the British have some good spies, finds that message, reads it, and then sends it on its way. Neither George Washington nor the Continental Congress know that they've been compromised. I'm sorry, my cat is is bothering me. So neither con neither George Washington nor the Continental Congress know that they've been compromised. So now the German mercenaries that are working for the Crown know to expect an attack uh, the day after Christmas from across the Delaware River. This is a man-in-the-middle attack. One person intercepts data being sent from one party to another. The data was... Uh, uh, intercept was intended so the data that was being sent was intended to remain secret now imagine you're logging into your bank account using your university library's Wi-Fi if there's a hacker sitting in that same library and on the same network they can listen to the signal that you're sending to to the router just as well as the router can because your computer isn't actually whispering requests to the router so that no other device can hear it's shouting requests for all Wi-Fi enabled devices to hear since your computer is shouting the password to the router, anybody can listen to that if they so choose to do it. Now, security has definitely gotten better for general web browsing, and there's a very real sense in which I am overstating the problem, uh, because the most common solution to man-in-the-middle attacks is uh, called SSL encryption, 
which is uh, which is now being replaced by an even better TLS encryption. So if you go to a website and you see that the URL uses HTTPS instead of HTTP, that means that it's using this encryption, uh, and you're not going to be vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks. So this particular man-in-the-middle attack that I'm describing. Most websites from big companies already use these protocols, and more than likely, your bank uses it. So there would be attackers sitting in the same in the same library as you would see encrypted data that makes uh, the would that data worthless to him or her. In fact, I would like to point out that there is an excellent and 100% free extension from the Electronic Frontier Foundation that makes doubly sure that you're using HTTPS on any website that has it available, and I highly recommend that you use it. Now, because of SSL, I have read some commenters argue that additional security measures such as VPN are not necessary. I don't necessarily agree with that because there are still websites that do not use HTTPS because it requires an extra 20 minutes of the webmaster's day, so they just don't bother to do it. Now, I'm going to be honest in saying that um, the first two weeks or so uh, that my DigitalOcean websites were up, they did not use encryption. Uh, but I've repented of that, uh, and they are now encrypted. At any rate, there are websites that do not use end-to-end -end encryption necessary to prevent the man-in-the-middle attacks, and VPNs will act as a trusted middleman to deliver that message safely. I personally will not use any public Wi-Fi without one. So if I'm in uh, Starbucks or a library, and I'm using someone else's Wi-Fi, I'm using uh, a VPN. Now a couple things that I do want to mention. Uh, that VPNs won't do. Just want to make sure you don't get uh, an overinflated idea of, of what how of what kind of security VPNs uh, will do for you. First of all, VPNs will have little to no effect on tracking being done through cookies. So that means, like the way Facebook tracks you, this will have little to no effect on Facebook keeping track of track of what websites you visit. My understanding is that sometimes this tracking is done through IP addresses, so that might have a small effect, even though your VPN's IP address is, con is constant, but even then, cookie behavior should not be any different. Uh, cookie behavior will not be any different through VPN, because your cookies are stored in your local machine. It doesn't matter where you're uh, visiting. Uh, second, this moch this... <laughs> Second, this won't do much to protect you from Interpol, the FBI, or other organizations like them. Uh, they can still track activity to your VPN, and the way I'm describing this, you're going to be owning the VPN. So, if they can track activity to the VPN, they can find out you own that VPN, and they can still track it back to you. So, if you're a whistleblower uh, that needs protection, this is not the route you want to take. Uh, you'll want to use Tor, which is used by WikiLeaks and the likes of Edward Snowden. And that's a completely different video series that I prop I don't think I'll be making that video series. Uh, and parenthetically, if you're just a run-of-the-mill criminal that wants to distribute illegal material online or run an online black market, VPNs will only help you to a limit, and frankly, I'm not interested in helping you. Even half the dark web is against you, and if you don't believe me, you can look up Freedom Hosting too. End of parenthetical, I just thought that was worth noting. So in closing... Uh, in, the following, in the following videos, I will be running some scripts that I wrote on a DigitalOcean server, a.k.a. a droplet. So, a DigitalOcean server is called a droplet. And the end result will be a fully functioning VPN server. In addition to paying DigitalOcean $5 a month for that server, this will involve uh, downloading some free software uh, called the OpenVPN Client. And I'll get into more details in that later, but I do want to warn you that... Um, you will have to in install something else as well on your local machine. And if you're running Windows, uh, there's going to need to be a second program that you install called uh, PuTTY, P -U -T -T -Y, and we'll get into that later on as well. Uh, and just another as a weird thing to say, special thanks to HashiCorp, the developers of Vagrant, a development tool that manages virtual machines very easily. Without it, testing the scripts that I wrote would have taken days instead of hours, and this video might have been more trouble than it's worth. The fine folks at HashiCorp are not paying me to say this, uh, nor do they know of my existence as far as I know. But I just think it's a really useful tool that's worth mentioning, especially since it was so incredibly useful for this particular project. Alright, uh, thank you very much for watching. I know this one was pretty dry. The next one I think is probably going to be more quick moving. So... 
Uh, and thank you very again. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.